Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. A couple days ago, news broke that the parent company of Origin and Akina Pet Foods, Champion Pet Foods, was bought out by Mars. Mars is a large corporation that already owns a bunch of other pet food companies. Most notably, they own IAMS, Royal Canin, and Pedigree. Now Mars has brought Champion Pet Foods into the mix, and this can potentially be concerning to some pet owners. When I heard this news, I obviously went on social media and let you guys know in case you are feeding Champion Pet products and you do care that they were acquired by Mars. And the number one response I got, besides frowny face emojis, was, what does that mean? So today's video is explaining what it means when a pet food company is acquired by a larger company, kind of the tracks and the steps it takes to get to that point, and what this could potentially mean for the future. This video isn't meant to totally bash Champion Pet Foods, Origin and Akana. It's also not meant to bash people who still choose to feed those foods, because ultimately these foods are still significantly better than a lot of the other foods on the market, especially those that are readily available at a pet co in this case. However, there are some negative side effects to being acquired by a large company that I think are worth discussing, whether you are feeding these foods or you are feeding a different food that may have the potential of being acquired at some point in the future. Champion Pet Foods has two different brands underneath them. They have Origin and Akina, which is one that you might be familiar with. They make both cat and dog food and they first started making pet food in 1985. Champion was originally an independent family-owned business in Alberta, Canada. And one thing that's important to note that plays into the grandstand that was Champion Pet Foods is that Canada has a higher standard of how food is grown and prepared and slaughtered than we do here in the US. So generally the rule of thumb is that if a pet food comes from Canada, it's likely to be of a higher quality than its American counterparts. Obviously that's not the case for all brands and there's plenty of examples of that not being the case. However, that's just the general kind of benefit of a Canadian pet food company versus an American one. And this definitely plays a role in the downfall of Champion Pet Foods. Now, Champion Pet Foods marketed themselves as the world's best pet food. To this day, that's still their tagline. And quite frankly, for a long time, they absolutely were. Champion Pet Foods really prided themselves on their specific sourcing. They had really high protein and animal protein specifically content in their foods. And for their origin line, they had a whole prey model, which means there was no meat meals in their foods. It all came from a real fresh meat source. Especially at the time when these foods were being made, that was pretty unique. And even again, to this day, still pretty unique to have that whole prey model in a kibble. Over the years, as Champion was getting more and more popular among pet owners, they added an investment group. Investment groups are often necessary for small businesses because you need money to make money and not everybody has that initial money. In this particular case, they brought in an investment group and over the years, it got to the point of that investment group owned more percentage of the company than the original family themselves. So even though Champion Pet Foods was family owned, it was not family owns the majority and makes all of the decisions. Because the investment group took over a larger percentage, they got a little bit more pull in what happens. And that, again, plays a role into what happens later on in the story. In 2016, Champion opened a brand new manufacturing facility in Kentucky. And this is where things started to get a little bit dicey for Champion. Origin and Akana became really, really popular in the States. So it makes sense to have a manufacturing facility in the States so it's not having to travel as far from Canada. And all of the food sold in the United States began coming out of this Kentucky facility. Everywhere else in the world, the 90 countries that Champion Pet Foods supplies still comes from the Canada facility. Now this raised a couple red flags among some pet owners because like I said in the beginning, Canada has a higher standard of quality of their products, how things are raised, how things are slaughtered than we do here in the US. So while it was not by any means guaranteed that some things were being a little lax here in the States, it was a possibility and it could absolutely be legally allowed. And so that raised a couple of red flags for some pet owners. A few years later in 2019, Petco announced that Champion Pet Foods, Origin and Akana, were going to be sold in their stores. And this is another red flag for a lot of pet parents. The shift into Petco stores raised some concerns for a couple different reasons. 
First of all, up until this point, they only sold to independent retailers. This is for a variety of different reasons, you know, helping out the little guys, the mom and pop shops, the independent pet stores, by only selling to them helps to keep them in business. We also have a level of employees at those stores aren't always more educated on nutrition and the products in their stores than like Petco PetSmart employees, but they are able to get additional training from the brands that tends to not get the same amount of training from the big guys. So you do potentially have more educated staff, but kind of the biggest concern is that once you go into a Petco, your market becomes much, much bigger. With small independent brands, they typically sell to small independent stores because if they were to let the people buying their food get too big, their food's gonna have to drop in quality because supply has to meet demand. And you know, if you're only getting your chickens from Joe down the street who raises them in a chicken penthouse and takes super good care of them and they're really high quality chickens, he might not be able to support an additional million bags of food sold. You're gonna have to find a new source of your chickens. It's not gonna be that same high quality that you started with. And this was a really, really big concern with Origin and Akina going into Petco is this great food might have to lose a lot of its quality. Around the same time, they also changed their packaging. And who doesn't love new packaging for a new store, a new era of your company? And the answer is educated pet consumers. We don't like packaging changes. Those are usually very concerning. I am a sucker for packaging, honestly. A lot of like treats especially that I buy. Still buy the healthy ones, but if they come in cute packaging, that is going to make me choose one brand over the other. I'm a sucker for packaging. But when I notice that packaging changes on especially foods, that's an immediate red flag for me because I know the formulas change. Most companies aren't just randomly changing their packaging because they think it'll be fun and fresh and new because that takes so much money. And unless you have a real reason for doing it, most brands are not gonna spend a bunch of money on a new designer to make new bags, to slowly fade out the old bags and just to create this whole entire mess. The real reason is often a formula change. Now, pet food companies have six months after a change is made to the formula to update that change on their packaging. This means that if all of a sudden your pet stops eating their food or something seems different and six months later a new packaging comes out and it says new, fresh, new design, same whatever, probably switch their formula that six months ago when your pet noticed and we're just now finding out. That's totally legal by the way. That's like a thing that's just normal part of the industry is you can change your formula and you don't have to worry about telling anybody until six months later when you come out with a new fun bag. Now I was working in a pet store at this time and I knew this so I was really curious once I started seeing new packaging roll out on Origin and Akana products what kind of changes there were. And honestly the changes weren't that extreme but they were notable. For example when I compared the old bag of food to the new bag of food, I noticed the old bag said Alaskan salmon, whereas the new bag said salmon. I noticed things like whole egg in the old bag, and when you looked at the new bag, it just said egg product. And those kinds of things, while seem really trivial, show that the sourcing and the ingredients are changing on those foods. They aren't as great as they used to be, and most companies, when they change their formulas, it's not for the better. So while these changes weren't like extreme all of a sudden there's byproducts and corn and wheat and whatever else is in the food that wasn't the case but it was notable changes back in 2019 that the formula was getting a little bit less world's best pet food so that brings us to the mars acquisition of 2022 back when champion hit petco nestle was kind of in the running of acquiring the brand nestle owns Purina is kind of their most notable brand that they own. But ultimately it was Mars that went through with the deal in 2022. And so what does it mean when a brand that you've been buying gets acquired by these really big brands? If you've been watching videos of mine for a while, especially like my kibble ranking videos or my pet food ranking videos, we've talked a little bit about why I personally am not a huge fan of companies owned by much larger corporations. And it ultimately comes down to money 
and supply and demand. As a company or corporation gets larger and larger, often they're more likely to cut corners and really just raise the profit of their foods. And that often means selling it for maybe a little bit more, but also really keeping costs as low as possible, which doesn't lend itself to the highest of quality ingredients. Additionally, like we talked about before, there is that supply and demand aspect. So even if I was a super ethical company, I only wanted to feed the very, very best of whatever, if I only am comfortable sourcing from, say, two farms for my chickens, and I start getting too big and those farms can't support me anymore, my options are either scale down, become more particular, raise my prices, really niche down who's able to buy my food, or I can say, screw those two farmers, I'll find something that's slightly less quality, but I can meet the demand that's being asked of me. And that's kind of the shift that happens, is we start really, really great, high hopes, great expectations, and then especially being in Petco, being introduced to a much broader audience of people who've maybe never heard of your food before, that demand's gonna start going up and increasing. And unfortunately, that often means the quality starts to go down. So to kind of wrap all of this up with a couple questions that I've personally been getting since yesterday when I let you guys know what was happening with that whole situation, um, how do I personally feel about Champion Pet Foods at this moment? I've been very optimistically cautious about Champion Pet Foods for the last four or five years. And that's because I recognize that they have a great history in the pet food community. A lot of people who want to feed the very best for their pets fed Origin or Cana for a long time. And ultimately, even with all of their continuous decline, they're still relatively a pretty good food, in my opinion, as of right now. Especially when you compare it to foods at the grocery store, foods at Petco and PetSmart. Origin and Akena are still kind of that top of that tier. And if you're only able to shop at those places, you know, it's, it's, not, it's a good option, especially compared to some of the others. I don't think I would ever actively talk someone out of, oh, you're feeding Origin? Oh, you're feeding Akena? Like, I'm not that kind of person. Do I think that you should switch your food if you are feeding Origin or Akena? Not necessarily if you want to after watching this video because, you know, the things that I've expressed as downsides to an acquisition has really resonated with you and you don't want to mess with that. Totally cool. Feel free to switch. There's plenty of alternatives that we'll get to here in a second. If you don't care at all who owns the company, and you think that I'm kind of off my rocker for even making a video about it, that's totally fine too. Like, that, you're fine. You can continue feeding it, no judgment whatsoever. Some people care and some people don't, and that's one of those things that you can decide for yourself. And the third thing, I have been feeding Origin or Akena. I don't know what to feed now because I don't want to feed it anymore. And there's a couple of pet foods that are kind of in the same kind of aspect of things as Origin Nikena. Most commonly, I recommend brands like Nutrisource's Element line. Element is a, it was specifically made to compete with Origin. Um, so it's a high protein food. It is a multi-protein food. So, you know, I think it's like boar, kangaroo, and lamb is one of the flavors. And there's like a chicken, fish, and duck or something like that. So it's a mix of proteins. It's also all grain inclusive. So if you're wanting a grain inclusive food, they do use more ancestral grains, which I much prefer to some of the more traditional grains. Um, so that would be a good grain inclusive, high protein option that is going to be similar to Origin. There's also Essence. Essence is from Pets Global. They're the same company that does Signature. Um, Essence is multi-protein as well, but they break it up into categories of red meat, poultry, and fish. Um, so if you can't do chicken, for example, you have two other options. Um, and that is a green-free food. It's also a pea-free food. Um, so that is an option as well, although I hear that they're having some issues keeping things in stock right now. So 
if you're an essence feeder and you want other alternatives, here are some more. Um, Fermina is another brand that I recommend often. They tend to be on the higher protein side. They have grain free and grain inclusive options. They come out of Italy, um, which is a pretty high standard of pet food country. Um, and that's one that I recommend pretty often as well. Uh, off the top of my head, there's also Raws. Raws, I think I've recommended in the past for cat food. Um, and I still recommend their cat food. But they also make dog food. Um, and Raws does not do any meals. So it's R-A-W-Z. It's not a raw food. Their tagline is like the next best thing to raw. But it's not raw. A lot of people get confused by that. I'm not a huge fan of that whole thing. But whatever. Uh, they don't use meat meals, so again, kind of looking at the origin model of not using meat meals, Raws kind of fits similarly with that. There's a ton of other brands that I'm sure are kind of like in this vein, but those are the four that right off the top of my head when I read this news came to mind as alternatives. So that's what it means to get acquired. That's kind of the track that Origin and Akena have taken to get to the point they're at now and what you can do if you want to switch your foods. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this, if you found this video helpful at all, um, if you'd like me to do more videos kind of like this in the future, if this happens to any other brands, definitely let me know, as well as what you think and how you feel about the whole situation down in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you've not already. Um, I do tons of training and nutrition stuff on here. So whether you're looking for a new food or you're looking for ways to enhance whatever food you're already feeding, we got videos about that. Lastly, you can also follow me on social media. That's where I posted the information of this the whole thing happening first and was able to collect some questions and answer some questions for you guys there. Um, you can follow me at my business account. That's Top Dog Behavior. That's going to be more, you know, infographic based, more information based. Um, and you can also follow me on tattoo.dogtrainer. It's my personal account. You're going to get more of the YouTube side of things there. Um, but they heard this information first. So if you would like updates like that in the future, if you find this helpful, go ahead and give those accounts a follow. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one. Bye.